So last one for today. Uh, my name is Fabian, and I also work for Domain. And today I'm here to talk to you about designing voice user interfaces for um, Amazon Alexa. Um, is here with me today, so yeah, it's, she's going to be she is going to be helping uh, throughout the presentation. Um, how many of you have used Alexa before or have owned one? All right, cool. So for those who don't know, that's just uh, there is not much to it. It's essentially just a bunch of speakers, a microphone, and uh, then everything happens uh, online. Um, so you can do fun things like um, say, Alexa, introduce yourself. I'm Alexa, and I'm designed around your voice. You can ask me to play music, answer questions, get the weather and sports scores, create to-do lists, and much more. Isn't she great, really? <laughs> yes, I think I am. <laughs> All right, cool. So the talk today is more about how to design good user interfaces for voice. But what is really so different about, about voice UIs, right? Well, there's no screen, right? So your users can't really discover uh, how your application works or what it can do. This is the only cat picture for today, I promise. Um, so to me, it reminds me a lot of um, when um, smartphones started to, uh, to come up. And you know when we all got access to the web everywhere? Uh, that was pretty much unusable, right? Zoom in, zoom out everywhere. All those flight menus that you can click, but then you can't select anything because the second you take your finger off, it's, it's, uh, it's gone away. So this is the same for, um, to me, it's, it's very, very similar for, uh, for voice. You can't just use the same flows as you would use in your mobile apps or in your web apps and just um, make a voice interface for it. So with, um, with Alexa, you can uh, teach it new tricks, right? And those new apps are called skills. So what's a skill? Essentially, that's just an API that you would run uh, on your servers, does a few things, and then send some JSON back to uh, to the device, which is then going to um, spell it out for you. Cool. The first step of it is to define an interaction model. So that's how Alexa is going to understand what you say and take actions based on that. So you don't have to worry too much about doing the natural language processing and all these kind of things. It does everything for you, and you just get some JSON back. But um, So you've got three components there, utterances, slots, and intents. So let's just look at an example. Assuming that I've got an app called Skill Demo, um, I would call it like that. So I'd say, Alexa, ask Skill Demo what are skills. Then it would give me the definition about the skill. So you have to say, Alexa is just waking it up. It, it's not listening unless you say this. That's, at least that's what Amazon says. Uh, <laughs> then when you say ask, it's going to say, oh, OK, I need to start a skill. Skill demo is just a, the name of the skill, so that's how it knows that, yes, in, our, in the case we, we're going to look at in a minute, it's going to have to start the domain app, for example, the domain skill. What are, in this case, is the utterance. So that's, it's going to look at that to, to try to find out which, which action um, in, your, uh, in your skill to, to trigger. And then skills is just a variable, but in, uh, in uh, Alexa language, it's, uh, it's called a slot. Now, if you're already uh, in the middle of a conversation with, uh, with Alexa, you wouldn't wake her up, obviously, because she's already listening. It is already listening. Uh, and you would just say, tell me more about what skills are. In that case, tell me more about what are is the, the utterance, and skills is still the variable, the slot. And the combination of the utterance and the slot gives you the intent. In this case here, it, it figured out that the intent is to get a definition. And the variable, the parameter for it is skills. Um, so yeah, I thought we might as well just go through a real-world example and show you what we've done uh, at Domain. We've uh, played with it a little bit. So I could say, Alexa, ask Domain what my property is worth. And what would happen here is that um, before it reaches my APIs, Amazon is actually going to pass all this, and I'm going to get a few things in, uh, in the request in JSON. So again, you don't have to worry about passing the text and all that. It's going to be done, uh, the, the voice and all that. It's going to be done for you. So here I know that it's an intent request. So OK, so it triggered one of those intents we were talking about. And the intent that it picked up is get property value. We'll get to that in a second. And there was no parameters. So how, how did it figure that out from that sentence that I wanted to get the property value? Well, that's because you start by uh, in a developer portal by defining your, your interaction model. In, in this case here, I've defined two intents. The first one is get property value, and it doesn't have any parameters. And the second one is a free text intent, um, which is just taking some random text and is going to try to process it as a, as a postal address. Um, 
there's also a bunch of uh, built-in intents that Amazon make um, available to you guys. You have to make sure that you add them to your app for some of them, to your skill, or your 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 submission could get rejected as well. Like uh, you need to uh, to make sure that people can um, get out of your skill if they want to, and they don't have to listen to uh, two hours of your book all at once. Um, so the ones that we'll be especially using here are the yes intent and no intent. Uh, and then uh, you have to map all this. So there is a section for utterances on the, on on the, um, Dev Portal where you just start with the name of the intent and then give it an example of what your users might say to, to trigger this. So in this case here for the get property value intent, the utterance could be, what is my property worth? Now you don't have to, uh, to have every single little case is here. Um, they do a lot of, um, uh, all the combinations, I mean, because um, Amazon is going to do a lot of uh, a lot of the natural language processing for you. So he here, if I was to say what's my property worth or what my property is worth, that would work just the same. Um, but I do have two examples because I wanted to work with property and with house. So for that, I had to, uh, to have a difference. Uh, and then the last intent I've got here, the second one is free text intent, which is just going to take everything I say as a variable. And you'll see what it looks like in a second. So again, Alexa, ask domain what my property is worth. Sure thing. Where do you live? Okay. So your API is just, uh, just has to, uh, to uh, return this little bit of JSON here where you've got the output speech, uh, in our case, the exact text. And um, after a few seconds, if you don't reply, it's going to ask again. And you get, as a developer, the opportunity to change the text a little bit. So here, for example, I dropped uh, sure thing. Uh, the last... Um, uh, the last thing here is uh, should end session, which is set to false, meaning the, com the conversation is still going. Don't, we, we're not restarting from the beginning every time. So I'm going to give it my address. Uh, this time it's, uh, it's going to pick up free text intent. That's the second intent we declared earlier. And I do have a variable this time, which is my address, exactly as I said. Or is it? Not quite, because it picked up that I said seven heels and turned the, the, the word into a number. So just be careful about that when, uh, when you do your, your processing behind the scene with your API. Okay, I have found a property at 13 Jeanette Street, Seven Hills, New South Wales, 2147. Is that yours? So I'm not going to go through the details of the response this time because that's very similar to what we had before, but just uh, in the best practices for designing your, your voice, UX, uh, voice UX, when you do have a complicated questions, when you expect a lot of free text, just confirm with your user that uh, you actually understood what they want, right? Cool. So I'm just going to say, yes, this is my house. And this time it's going to just use the built-in yes intent. This property is a house with three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and one parking space. It is on a block of land that is 683 square meters. This house is estimated to be worth around $728,000, with a range from $630,000 to $825,000. Would you like to hear more? So there's a lot of information here, so, and there is a lot more that we can give as well. Uh, again, you don't want people to have to sit through the uh, two hours of your book all at once or something like that, so maybe just make sure to keep things uh, short enough. Uh, and if you really have a lot more content, ask if, uh, your users if, you, if they want to hear more. In this case here, we're running out of time. We're actually out of time already. So I'm just going to say, no, nope, I don't want to hear more. And I just get the, the no intent. Everything works as expected. Would you like to claim this property on domain home price guide? So this part I really like. Um, again, there is no screen, so there is no way for your users to discover what they can access and what they can't, right? So. Um, when, it's, when they're just about to get out like that, say, well, hang on, actually, do you want to do this? Because that's easy, and that's just a yes or no answer as well, so, so why not? So, I'm, of course, right? I'm going to do this. Uh, note that this time, even though I said, of course, it still picked up the yes intent. That's something that Amazon deals with as well. It knows a few ways of saying yes, and that's just going to map it automatically. Done. All yours. So here, um, yeah, just make sure that you try to keep the personality of Alexa as well. If you try a lot of the, the built-in built -in tasks that, that come with the device, you'll see that she's, uh, it is, uh, um, yeah, it's got a bit of a, of a personality, so try to keep that as much as possible. It's not a robot after all, it's your personal assistant, right? Uh, and then here, there is nowhere to go, so I'm just setting should end session to true to say yes, the conversation is over, and the next time I want to ask something, I'm going to have to say, Alexa, ask domain, and go again. 
So that's good because we, we already knew how to how to get Alexa to to answer these questions for us. Give us the about give us the, the property value, but let's just assume that we just installed the app and we don't know what the skill and we don't know what it does. Right? So you would say Alexa, start domain, right? And we don't know what happens. So at this time the, the the request type is different. It's not an intent request anymore, it's a launch request, meaning that in your skill, in your API, you can actually do uh, things a little Welcome bit differently. Welcome to Domain. How can I help you today? You can ask me what your property is worth and what your upcoming inspections are. So now that's very, very clear for the users that there is only two, two things that they can ask. And um, yeah, uh, there's not much more to, to talk about here. It's just going to go with uh, the, the same flow again. So I can just say, hey, what is my, my house worth? Again, it maps to the same things as before. Do you still live at 13 Jeanette Street? Seven Hills, New South Wales, 2147. So this is very important. Uh, input by voice is difficult. Uh, so as much as possible, try to remember things about your users. So just to make it a lot easier for them the next time around when, uh, when, when they start using your skill. Cool. So that was a simple scenario, but um, every now and again, Alexa needs a little bit of a hint on how to pronounce things. And uh, to use that, to, to do that, you can use something called SSML. Now, I tend to always forget what SSML is for, though. Speech synthesis markup language. Thanks, Alexa. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so, yeah, so there's just a little bit of markup that you, you would drop uh, into your, the text of your responses just to give it a, a hint of uh, what, how it should say things. Let's just look at a quick example. Great job, how you, uh, you are correct. OK, so how would she say that? It's Great job, you are correct. Now, I don't know what you think about this, but my first thought when I hear this is, come on, just say it like you mean it, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, she could do better. Uh, so your first instinct might be to try to do something like that. Great ER job. You are correct. <laughs> yeah, not quite. So that's why you would just drop a little bit of markup like this, call it an emphasis uh, with a strong level, and that should sound much, much better. Great job. You are correct. Now I believe it. <laughs> okay, uh, next thing to, um, to be careful of, numbers, and especially phone numbers. Um, Dialing 18,001,234,567. So that's very impressive, but that's also pretty much useless, right? What we want is more something like this. Dialing 1-800-123-4567. So that's great, but then you have to worry about... Um, formatting the phone number correctly, right? And if your app is uh, available worldwide, then you've got different phone numbers in different formats and all these kind of things. It's it's very complicated. Uh, what you can do is just have um, a bit of a bit of markup here to just uh, to just tell Alexa to say it as a phone number, and that sounds just exactly the same as before. Dialing one eight hundred one two three four five six seven. Hmm. But if you look over here, I haven't actually formatted the I haven't actually formatted the, the phone number at all. Now, last thing before, before we go for today, my favorite, audio tags. So as of just a few months ago, you can start dropping now um, sound effects within, uh, within the speech that uh, Alexa would read out. Uh, that's very useful for some applications. There is a game called um, um, The Magic Door. I forgot that one. Uh, and that's just an adventure game. And uh, so you, know, you, you, you find yourself in magic world and you keep going and make decisions and things happen. Um, so you might have something like that in the game. Oh my, do you feel that cold wind? It sure is getting dark. We hear wolves howling. I don't like that. So that's all good. Uh, you've got this part here. It's very descriptive, but really it's not really engaging, right? So what if we were just to drop wolves in the, in, um, in the speech back? That would sound something like that. Oh my, do you feel that cold wind? It sure is getting dark. I don't like that. <laughs> it's all of a sudden a lot, uh, a lot more engaging, and now you can play this game for hours. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, check it out. Actually, it's a very good game. Um, so I think that's all we've got time for today. Uh, actually, we're a little bit late. Um, if you want to hear more about Alexa, there's a session this afternoon, Room 7, by uh, Ether Downing about how to build those APIs, so more getting into, uh, into the, the, the code of it. Um, and if you want to see more about the cool things that we've built at Domain, go to tech.domain.com.au. If you're interested in the APIs that we use to build this skill that you heard about just before, head to developer.domain.com.au. We've just made all those APIs public a couple of weeks ago. Don't forget to tell them we're hiring.
No, that's right. We're hiring as well. <laughs> <laughs> so wh whatever you're doing, front end, back end, mobile, if you do it, we need it. So um, yeah, um, get in touch on LinkedIn or after the talk. Thank you.